Okay, at this point on our evolution on learning computer programming, uh, if you're watching this video, you have probably already learned how to do conditional statements with the if structure, and you have already learned how to do iteration, repetition with either while loops or for loops, whatever, whatever you feel more, more inclined or whatever resonates better with your style of coding, right? Um, but this is a wonderful moment to talk about a property of variables that I could not explain when I explained variables, because at that time, we didn't really know structures that defined this thing that I'm going to call scope. And therefore, we could not talk about uh, the problem or the property of variable scoping related to where variables are defined. So let me talk about that. But before, and this is like a super, super important property of, of variables. But before I start, let me explain which problem may we hit if we actually don't take into consideration the scope of a variable. So for example, let's say that I had two variables a and b, and that I wanted to compare them. And based on that comparison, I wanted to create a message that then somewhere else farther down in my code, I wanted to print to the console. Okay, uh, so instead of printing directly to the console, what I want to is to create a message that I will store in memory, and somewhere down the line in my program, I'll print that to the console. So that program with what we know so far could look something like this. If a is greater than b, then what I could do is I could declare a variable called, for example, message and say, this, they're greater, a is greater than b, for example, right? Otherwise, if that was not the true, what I could say, well, then if that's not the true, then that message is going to be that the variable a is not greater, okay? And then maybe imagine that there's like a million lines of code. That's why I need this message in the middle. And I really need to print this to the console at some point farther down the road. If I do that, then you can see how if I print, if I type here message, then I'm getting an error here. And that error is telling me the name message doesn't exist in the current context. But this is very strange because it does exist here. It's a sys, I declared the variable here. I declared it here. And even look at this error message here. This is telling me that the variable message is assigned, but the value is never used, which is also very weird because I'm trying to use it here. So I'm tr here, I'm trying to read this variable. And here, the variable is telling me that it's never read anywhere, which I'm trying to read here. Why is this happening? Where is this, this connection happening? Okay. So that's one situation where you may hit this problem. The other situation, I'm going to cancel this out because that code doesn't work for some reason, is, for example, with um, imagine that I am in a situation where I want to I want to add together the first ten the first ten digits from zero to nine. I want to know what their total sum is together, which I believe is the number forty five. But let's Let's just check if that is true. Let me write a for loop that iterates over the first 10 digits. So something like this, I declare a variable i that starts at zero, that is going to be less than 10. And then probably what I need to do is I need to create a variable that I'm going to use to set to initialize it to zero and then to start adding one after the time, one at a time in each iteration of the for loop, the number one, the number two, the number three to the partial result all the way until I end up with the total. So something that I can do is I can declare a variable called sum that I initialize to zero. And then every iteration, I say whatever sum was before, can you increase it by the value of i? And hopefully, after 10 times, the value of sum will have the aggregation of zero, one, two, three, four, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And then after the fact, I should be able to write to the console the value of sum but I am getting the same error again. Why doesn't sum exist here if I have declared it here and I'm actually using it? This is not giving me a problem, right? So what is the problem here? The problem that I'm going to, the problem that is going on here is that variables have this property called the scope. And I would like you to think of the scope as um, the life expectancy of a variable, or in other words, if you will, 
um, the accessibility, the visibility of that variable, where it can be used and who can use it based on where they are. And but what does it mean where they are when it comes to code? Does it mean like if it's lines below, lines above, etc.? Mm -mm, not really. What it means in co in code terms is that when you're writing structures like conditional statements or like for loops, I'm not sure if you notice, but we very often use this thing called opening and closing curly brackets. And that is not just notational flavor. That actually has a very strong meaning because whenever we open and we close curly brackets, we are defining a code block. That is the technical term for that. And a block of code not only is just a way of putting a bunch of lines together so that they execute if this is true or not, but also code block, the code blocks define scope. And a scope is basically like an environment where variables and actions can happen. The rules of variable scopes is that when it comes to variables, and this is super important, when it comes to variables, the life expectancy of a variable or where that variable can be used depends on the scope of where it was declared. And I'm going to stress the word declared here. All right, let me say that again. A variable exists only inside of the scope that it was declared in. And if you remember from my lecture, from my video on variable creation and declaration, you may remember that declaring a variable is this part here, the one where you say, when you, when you say this is the name of the variable and this is the type. So that's one thing. And then this other part is the assignment of a value. So this is two things together, declaration and assignment. But remember that we also explained that we can split them together. So what's happening is that because I am declaring the variable message inside of this block of code here, then whenever the computer reaches the closing curly brackets, any variable that was declared inside of this scope, it's gone. It ceases to exist. And the actual technical term for that is that it becomes garbage collected. This is really a term, right? You can, you can, you can Google this. I'm not lying to you. So what that means is that in this, when I, this was true, I did create a variable. I assigned this value, but then that variable disappeared as soon as I hit this curly bracket here. Similarly, if I run the else statement, I declare this variable, I gave it a value, but then it disappeared right away when I hit this line of code. And that is why this value, so this variable here doesn't exist because it was not, it stopped existing after these curly brackets here. So that's why this is not visible. How can I fix that? Mm. Let me go, let me explain what is happening here before we actually get into fixing things, anything. Here, we have a very similar situation. We have a block of code that defines a scope, all right, defined by the curly brackets. And we're executing this code 10 times. And what is happening each one of those 10 times is that I am declaring a new variable called sum. I initialize it to zero. Then I add the value of i to this variable and then that variable disappears. And this happened 10 times. I create the variable, I add the value, and the variable disappears. I create the, val the variable, uh, I add a value, and then the variable disappears. 10 times over and over. I'm creating using destroying, creating using destroying 10 different times. And that's why, and because I'm doing this inside of the for loop, that's why it's not accessible. It doesn't exist anymore outside of the block defined by the for loop. All right? So how can we fix that? Well, the rules of scoping are so that any variable exists in the scope that it was declared and in any children and any nested scope within that larger one where it was declared. So what I can do then is I can take this variable here and instead of declaring it inside of the block, what I can do is I can go ahead and say, I'm going to declare it before the block. All right. And I'm not going to give it any value. It doesn't matter. I don't have to even initialize it. You see what's happening here. Now I'm getting an error 
because it's telling me I cannot declare another variable because in this scope, in the children's scope, this variable already exists. So what I need to do is I need to stop trying to declare it again. And what I can do is only use it at this point. Similarly here, I'm going to use this variable. Okay. And you can see that I declare a variable and then based on the condition, I give it one value or the other. But this variable, which was declared in this scope here, the one defined by static, void, main, whatever that is, I don't think we have seen what that is at this point in the playlist, right? So uh, because this is the scope of this variable, this variable is visible and exists at this point of the program and all the way until we finish this function here. So that's why now this works perfectly. Similarly here, what I want to do is I want to declare the variable of sum in a scope where it becomes permanently and where, blah, 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 where it becomes permanently and where I can use it over and over again to keep adding more data to it. So what I can do is I can just move this out of the for loop. I can declare it before the for loop. And then once it's out, declared outside of the for loop, I can use it over and over again. I can increase its value. And then after the for loop, the variable still exists. And then I can use it here. So let's see if that works. I'm going to run this code. And then you can see that I get the greater message printed to the console. That's this one. And then for the for loop, I have I can now print also the value of sum, which has all the aggregations of all the values from zero to nine. All right. Um, so um, how is this? Was this difficult to understand? Was it complex? The idea again is that where you declare a variable, in which scope you declare the variable matters a lot. And the accessibility will always be that variables will be visible and they will exist and they will be usable inside of the scope that they were declared and any nested scope, any children's scope within that larger scope. After that scope ends, so in this case here, then that variable ceases to exist. It's not available anymore. It's just garbage collected. Okay. The implications of this are super, super powerful because it's up to us to decide where we define, where we declare our variables so that we have like a contained scope where we live. It's not a good practice, for example, if you have a very large program with tons of variables, you don't want to be declaring all the variables to be in the parent parent in the main scope. Because if you're just going to be using them for a very small operation, like a for loop, for example, then you probably don't want to declare I in the parent scope. You would just want to declare them inside of where they're going to be using them. And you want to forget that variable afterwards. You want to do that because first of all, you don't want to pollute your global scope. You don't want to have so many variables in the main scope that things may start getting confusing or you may actually run out of names if that's even a possibility. But also at the same time, it's, um, it's a much, it's a much safer way of coding because if I had a global I that I was using for many different for loops, then I might run into the, the risk of forgetting to initialize it to zero or whatever value I want to start the for loop with, and then start from a different value from the one that I expected and end up in some error. So that's why scoping variables, whatever they're going to be used, that the, wherever they're going to be used, and then not in a greater scope is actually a really, really good practice. And, uh, and it's a very good practice to do when computer programming. That's also one of the main differences between using while loops for iteration and for loops for iteration. When you use while loops, you have to declare a variable before the while loop and then just check it inside of the while loop, which means that that variable stays in that context, in that scope until whenever the scope ends. Whereas when you use, when you use for loops, whichever variables you declare here, they are scoped within the for loop, which means that after the for loop, there is no variable of i. i stops existing after I have finished my for loop, which is a very good practice. It's actually a really good thing to do. Okay, uh, you don't want to mix. You don't want to mix a lot of i's and 
things together that can yield to that can lead to a lot of mistakes okay all right awesome so variable scoping keep it always in mind where you declare variables is important and now you have seen how the technique of separating declaration and separating assignment may actually have some meaning and some real world use okay thank you very much see you in the next video